Hello. Welcome back. Right, get myself comfy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to paint and decoupage this, I think it's a scrumpy bottle. So, um, so I'm going to give it a coat of paint, then let it dry, see how it's covered. Um, and if I need to do another coat, I'll do another coat and then I'll come back to you. Um, I'm just using a flat matte chalky paint. Um, it's from Wilkinson's and it's their best flat matte paint. I think this is in the... I oh, can't think. White. Oh, it'll come back to me. White birch or silver birch. I think it is. So I took it out of the tin and I just put it in these little jars. So I'm going to use my little dabber because you get better coverage than with a brush. So I'm going to cover this with a bit of paint and then I'll just show you how I do it and then I'll come back to you then when I've um, fully covered it. So I usually just start by dabbing on you do get a little bit of a bubbly effect but I don't mind that um, gives them a bit of a vintage sort of finish but having said that I do sand it down so it will be smooth in patches because I like to give it a bit of a battered kind of look so this is what I do just cover it all as we go around just dabbing it all on it's quite therapeutic really so. make sure you've got a cloth down if you're using this technique because it does tend to splatter do get in fact I get covered in it as well but it's all part of it so just covering this there we go more cold weather to have here I think they're threatening us with um, snow next week so we'll just see whether we get any or not so I'm also going to show you what I do because I've um, repurposed some old coffee jars and tins and various other boxes and bits and it's what I use to store my brushes, pens, scissors and all bits and bobs like that in. Um, which is nice really because they all coordinate, they're all, they're all the same colours and similar pattern. But I just use napkins um, and cover them and then varnish them. But I will show you what I do and I'll show you what I've actually got and what I've got in them in the jars and tubs and tins and um, the biggest one that I do use is a coffee tin um, but I will show you and then I've also when I buy these paints for painting with I, um, I always save the tins and I actually cover and use them as well. Here I'll just show you really really quick. And I've got cocktail sticks in. Can you see that? That's I'm out of screen art a screenshot. So these are what I do. So I like them anyway. I'll um show you what I do with them. So Right then, so we've got that bit covered there, can you see? Like I said to you in 
previous videos I'm not used to working on camera I'm used to just getting my head down and doing it um, I don't craft as much as I'd like to but it's getting time into it to do everything so, so what I do in these little tricky little parts like under handle and everything I dab in as far as I can and then just stipple it back over you know just so that you get the same kind of finish um, I do also use a brush but I'll show you that as I get there just to get in just make it a little bit easier in fact I'll get one now and show you what I do and I can find one Bear with me. Why is it you can never find what you want? Right then, so I'm just using this this one. It's a fine angle one. Oh, it's angled one. So I don't know whether you can see this. I'm gonna struggle getting it in right angle. But I'm just gonna dab this into the nooks and crannies just paint round it get round that angle and up I do believe that these are a scrumpy cider bottle um, but I'm not a drinker to put money on it but I'm guessing so this is nearly all covered now so I'll just whiz this round with brush as soon as I'm on with it making sure that I get all under this handle right I usually end up wearing more paint than what's on glass but <laughs> it all adds to the fun of it doesn't it but this doesn't actually take that long to dry, to be honest. Um, so right, so I'm just gonna go over what I've done with the brush, just to get that stipply effect again. So I hope you can see what I'm doing or get some sort of a, an idea. You can use other chalk paints to do this. It's just that I like these and they are a bit cheaper than using the Annie Sloan's. Annie Sloan's. I have got some of her paint but it's thick and harder to work with. I don't, especially for doing things like this. But that's just my choice. I mean if you've got a stock of that and you want to use it by all means do. I'm not going to say to you which paint to use. But I like this because it's it's chalky and it's it's matte. I'm not really into the shiny kind of bits. But, and twinkle. But that's just me. So we're nearly covered on this now. be careful because I've noticed where I've gone over a couple of times I am starting to pick the paint back off so, so I'm going to let that dry now and then I'll come back to it but I do think looking at it we are going to need another coat so there you are so I've done all that Let you see it's all painted I haven't done the bottom yet but I will get to that I like to do it all all the way around so anyway so that's that bit so I'm going to just leave it there now to dry and I'll get a wipe and wipe the hand and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the the napkin 
that I'm going to be using for this and what I'm going to do with it. Right, so I'll just bob them in that napkin just so I don't get paint everywhere because that's usually my party piece. Get rid of that paint. <clears throat> right then, this is the napkin that I'm going to use. It's a vintage style one. Um, and it's just of a little girl with an headband and a pink flower in her hair with some writing in but I can't I can't decipher what it says because it's French. Um, so obviously when you buy these these napkins you do get four images out of one one napkin and then what I do is you only want the top layer so it's really really delicate but you get used to it. I mean at first when I first started doing this I was like oh a bit too fragile for my liking but you get there it's just time and patience so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna I just use me my water pen and then but you can just use an ordinary paintbrush and a bit of water so decide which side I'm going to use, I've decided I'm going to use this image here where she's facing right. So I'm just going to go down here, down the crease, like that. And then same again down that one. And then I'm just going to gently pull them apart. And then I've got another three images left there for other projects as and when I do them. There's plenty of sellers on eBay that do napkins. Um, I take what well, I've used in the past, K Art Gallery, um, the napkin shop. I think they're about 90, 99 pence plus postage and packaging. I'm just giving this side a little bit of a rough edge. So I'm just taking the, the very edge off here. So I just don't want it to be a dramatic, full, straight edge cackle. <laughs> and not only that, if we have any mishaps, You've no straight line to work to, have you? I mean, some might want that straight line at the bottom. I personally don't, but that's just my preference. So, that's that done now. And I'll, oh, and we've dropped it. As you can see. Sorry, I'm just getting used to wet camera handlers. So, I know she's the wrong way around. So, let me see. Anyway, so I'm going to just leave that to one side. I've got my Mod Podge ready. And my brush. So, we will be back. Well, I will be back as soon as this paint's dry. So, I will... What is that? That's a bit paper up the napkin so I will be back shortly I just need this to dry and again sorry about the squeaky chair but it is my old chair and I love it to bits it's so comfy so I will catch you back in a bit well hello we're back and we're all dry um, I did actually have to give it another coat because it did go on really really patchy but I didn't think it were worth filming that bit where um, I just give it another coat because I mean you'd seen me painting it a little bit on the first one but anyway so we're nearly ready to get this on this image so what I've actually done is I aren't measuring because more often than not I just eyeball my work anyway unless it's something specific that I need to 
have exact measurements on. So, I folded it in half, as you can see, or near on. And then I'm just going to eyeball it here for the centre. So, I am just about happy with that. So, so I'm going to just pull my chair up and sit down rest my weary bones so I'm just going to bob on some oh, some mod podge and then I'm going to get get this on this napkin um, let me just get my little bag because I use a little plastic food bag to um, smooth it on and I just get my hand in it and I feel as though I can work better that way. So let's start. So I'm going to start about here and I'm just going to put this on gently because I don't want any of this paint to lift. So. Just going to paint this on. Ready? It doesn't matter if I go over because I mean, this, even though it is matte Mod Podge, it does actually leave a little bit of a, a glossy finish, I think. But I am actually, just bear with me, I've just got a hair off the brush on it somewhere. Aha. Um, I forgot what I was saying now, I've lost my trailer thought. Um, oh, because I'm going to, it leaves a bit of a glossy finish in my eyes. I mean, it's everybody's to their own, but I don't really like it. But I'm going to sand this down soon. But, I mean, I'll, I'll show you what I'm doing. I mean I probably won't show you sanding because my setup's in here and I don't want to be sanding all this paint in here. Can't be done with all that dust. I'll be manic. So if I've missed any bits I'll just go under with brush with some more well, speck there. So I'm just working that hip. I hope you can see what I'm doing because like I say I'm not used to um, working like this. So I'm just going to get my central line again. So I'm going to go for about there. Just pull that down gently. I'm going to try and show you without getting a momentous amount of creases in it. I'm just going to just put that on there like that. And then I'm going to work some of these creases out. So as I said, I just get my hand in this bag and then I just push. But I'm not bothered if there's any creases in it, like small ones, because I want it to look vintage anyway and you'll see what I mean when I've um, sanded this off. So, so I'm just going to work this on and I'm going to concentrate on what I'm doing a little bit because I don't want to rag it. I just like to rub these bits up in, you know, on edge of napkin because you get like little dots and like a bit of a pattern going on. So, got that bit there. So, I'll turn it round and we'll have a go at this bit now. So, let me just lift that bit up. Thank you. 
plenty of rubbing that on. I'm just going to try and lift this bit. I mean, I'm, like I said to you, I'm not overly bothered. I mean, I like it to be nice, but once it's on, it's on. But you've got to be really, I mean, I, I know me how far I can go pushing and pulling on a napkin because I can feel it. But like for such as yourselves, unless you know where you're going with it, just be really, really careful. Because I think if you've come this far and then you get a tear in it or whatever, you'd be really, really disappointed. So I'm just going to flatten these little bits off now. So I might just need to just come in and bob a little bit more glue on. I mean, if, if the air is in a little bit, it doesn't matter because when I get fine sandpaper on it, it, it'll get it smoothed out. So, look at that. Right, so now I'm just going to have a look at bottom. this down like that and then I'm just going to let that seal a little bit and then I just pop this in my hand and then I just gently rub over again but only gently because if you start rubbing hard you will actually rub some of this off and sometimes it can cause the thing to trace off as well. So you'll end up with bits of dark bits over it. There's a few creases in this one. I'm happy with it because I want it to look old anyway. So that is that bit done. Excuse the noise of the chair. So I'll hold this up for you to see now. Um, I don't think you can see that well enough, but I've got her all stuck on. As you can see. So I'm going to let that dry and then I will be back to you. Okay, so go get a cuppa and chill and I'll be back to you shortly. Right, then we're all dry and I've sanded it down a little bit. Like I said I was going to do, but I couldn't do that in here. Too much dust. So I've just distressed it round, as you can see. Little bits. So now I'm going to give it a coat of varnish, but I'll give it two or three. Um, this is what I use. Um, it's the clear matte interior varnish. Um, I've actually just got that back up there out of the way. I've actually put it into a, a small jar because I wrecked the lid. But anyway, so. Let's give this a coat of varnish and then we'll sit and let it dry. So I'm just going to give it a coat. I'm just giving it a thin coat, but it's quite thin, is this varnish anyway? Making sure you've no runs. I could use a, a bigger brush, but I prefer to work with this. This one. I 
mean you could you could use satin varnish or gloss depending on what finish you prefer but personally I prefer the matte I know a lot of people when they do decoupage prefer to use a gloss finish but it's just not my preference We'll give it a further cut or two, depending on what it's like when this is dried. But I'll probably do that off film just to show you. Right. So I'm just going to do as much of the painted parts that I can before I go on to the transfer because often it does actually lift some of the colour I found off the napkin and I don't want that to taint the bottle as such. So there's a couple of little bits here that I've lifted off the napkin so I'm just going to smooth them down best I can. Burning. So as you can see it's not a really really smooth finish, it is a little bit rough in places but I've got a bit of paint there but I don't want it to look perfect anyway because in my eyes it's, it's old. for me to lift with one hand. I'm just going to work the varnishing to the handle bit. As you can see there, look, it's starting to lift it a little bit. I'm not phased. Sorry if you can't see. Right then. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know that I'm coming down with a cold. I sneezed and sneezed this morning when I got up. We'll see. So right, so I'm gonna do the napkin now. I'm gonna just go around these bits first. To the dark bits because it does sometimes, like I say, bleed. Well, not bleed, but it comes off. Does the black sometimes? I've noticed in my brush when I'll show you if it starts to do it. Just get rid of that bit. We don't want it. So, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna I'm just going to <laughs> just sweep up this and just try and go down. I'm just 
going down in vertical strokes to the jar. It's not a jar, is it really? It's, it's a bottle. I'm just checking to see if we're picking any of, of this up. So, for me, I think that is just about covered. I've not dragged that down there, she'll look like Alice Cooper. I'll start picking some dark <laughs> So, there we are. So I've vanished all that. Now, <coughs> So I'm going to let that dry. Um, get that in the the chair. So I've just give it a coat round. You see, and then I'm going to have to stand that up right now, like that, and then my finger out, and then I'm just going to go around the top like that. Just finish this bit off here and then I'm now going to leave that to dry. So I will give this a couple of coats but I won't do it off camera because I'll just be doing, on camera sorry, because I'll just be doing the same as what I've, I've done and I don't want to bore you with that long drawn out task. So there you are. So that's me just about done. It's just a case of showing you as, an, as it's finished. So I hope you've enjoyed this. This is how I work anyway. I know in how a lot of people do their decoupage, but I, this is how I find it easier and it works for me. So have a lovely day and thank you for watching. Any questions, please put them in the comments below. And I'll answer them for you best I can. So, catch you later. Bye. Hi there. We're back and we're all dry. So, here we are. All dry and sanded down. So, I just used a really fine sandpaper on it. Um, I think it was number one. So, so anyway... I was debating whether to put some ribbon, you know, around neck. So I've got this, like, I don't know, it's like a, a tape, white tape. So what I was thinking I was going to do was trying to, um, I've done a little bit already on the end just to test the colour. Um, so I've just... I don't know whether you can see that or not. I don't know. Can you? Can you see? Done it a bit. <laughs> I'm not right good at this. I'm aligning this camera up. But anyway, so I've done it that bit in a light pink. And I've got some distress ink here. And it's spun sugar. So I'm going to just dye this up a little bit. Or at least try. I don't know whether it's dried out a bit this probably do with re-inking but anyway we'll see if we can pick some up yeah picking it up I don't want it to be totally solid pink so I just want it to be bitty I just pressed it on just to try and transfer some of this ink. I think it needs reinking, but I'm not right sure where my reinkers are. I have got them, but like I say, this this room's in process of being done, so I'm having to just work with bits that I've got. So I'm just gonna transfer this on a little bit. Like I said to you, I don't want it perfect. I want it to look a bit washed out. So, so that's what I've used that. I don't know whether you can see. 
because lights are bright, aren't they? Um, so I'm just going to let this dry off. I'm going to give it a bit of a crinkle. And then I'm going to let it dry off. And then I'll be back. I'll be back. Right then we're back, ribbons dry, and a little bit screwed up, but that's how we want it. So I'm just going to bob this round the neck, I hope you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm just going to tie it round and just tie a simple bow. to add a little bit of a it's awkward I might have to just stand it up I hope you can see it's all new to me is this doing my bits on camera to try and adapt <laughs> so Pull it round, make it go where I want it to go. I don't want a big fluty bow. Just pulling it and tightening it as I go. And there we are, we're just about done. Just try and pull that round a little bit just so it sits a bit better. Let's pull it down and then I'm just going to give it another little scrunch up just so it looks a little bit on the vintage side. So there you are. There's the little it's not a little bottle but there you are all done so I hope you liked this little video <coughs> excuse me and if you did please give us a like and if you want to know anything else just pop it in the comments below um, and don't forget to subscribe for further videos of what I do in my little crafting room. So until then, have a nice day. Bye.